So I've been using the same camera setup for the past couple of years making videos and I had a new idea that I wanted to maybe make more efficient of the shop space. So let me turn you around and I'll show you uh, what my setup is and the issues that I have. So that's what my normal setup is. It's a Sony NEX camera, mirrorless. And I have, uh, here's a light that I usually use with a uh, tissue paper as a diffuser. And then I have this Velbon tripod stand. Which it works fine. But in a shop, um, it takes up a lot of space. The diameter of the feet from here to here is over 3 foot. It's like 38, 39 inches. So that's a lot of space. And it gets in the way when I'm working. And I have plenty of walking area. I give myself about three foot, three, four foot space to walk. But trying to set this down and have enough room, it takes a lot of uh, space. So what I was thinking of, instead of using a tripod, I wanted to do some type of monopod with a smaller footprint um, wheelbase. So that gave me the idea of, of using a uh, kind of like an IV uh, bag stand. It's, it's a small wheelbase and it has one pole just sticking straight up and that way I can use different type of clips to clip the camera to and I can change the position easily. So I've been looking for months for the IV bag stand and couldn't find one anywhere. New or, well I could probably find it new but I just was looking for it used because I didn't want to spend a lot. Since I couldn't find it I did have in the uh, pile of junk a uh, old broken chair. This is an old office chair. I took the seat off of it and I thought well this would be a good base. It's stable. The uh, diameter of it, I haven't even checked it out yet, is about 22 inches. So it's definitely going to be space saving and I could roll it around and it won't get in the way. So what I needed to do is find some type of pole to go on top of this. So the top is an inch here and it does flare out a little bit but I've had a difficult time finding a pipe that would slide over the uh, top of it uh, easily. So what I did find that was close, let me put you on the ground here, I found this, uh, I guess it's a fence post, it's, it's uh, galvanized steel. This is probably about six, seven foot and it has an inch interior diameter. So barely fits over the top there and it would make a good strong stand. So what we need to do is fabricate some type of uh, clamping system right there on the base with some pipe clamps to hold it strong. So what we're going to do is cut off some of the pipe and split it and then use it kind of like they use in plumbing to hear two pieces of pipe together, different materials. So we've got the pipe set up into our mobile uh, clamping vise. And what I want to do is, I've made a mark here where I want to cut the pipe. Now, to cut a straight line, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I, I kind of want to be somewhat straight. So a little trick I like to do to make a uh, straight cut, or at least semi-straight, is to take some tape here and to wrap it around where your mark is. And that way, uh, it gives you a nice straight line going all the way around. So just make sure you're perpendicular, like that. And then what I'll do is just follow the tape line right around there when I'm cutting. So now you can turn it and you can just follow, keep following the tape line. And it's a lot easier to do this than to try to draw a circle all the way around with a marker. Pretty good, alright. Close enough for what we would need to do. So now we're going to make a coupler to, com to join the base of the wheels to the pipe. To do that, we can't do, I wish I had another piece of pipe that we could just slide in between the two and then somehow drill bolts through, but we don't have that. So what we're going to do is take the pipe that we just cut, cut maybe eight inches off, and then we're going to split it down the middle to make two halves that we're going to squeeze around both parts. And that way it'll give us some adjustability. And that's how you break a jigsaw blade. Let me go find another one. 
All right, we got a new blade in. Let's keep going. I'm gonna turn the pipe here. Now we need to split this uh, down the middle on both sides. Instead of using the jigsaw, I think I'm gonna try to use the uh, metal cutting wheel. And I'm gonna wear a mask too, because here again, I'm gonna use the tape to create a straight line. So the cut's not pretty, but it gets the job done. But as I was test fitting the uh, pipe onto the, uh, the base, I realized why not just cut a slit into the uh, pipe itself and then you can slide it over. It looks like I cut an eight inch, an eight inch slot and it widens enough to get down over the base and then you just put pipe clamps on the bottom instead. So uh, let's try that and see if that works. Now that we got the pipe cut, let's see if we can raise this up without hitting the ceiling here. We might be a little too high. There we go. Let's see if we can fit this down here. There we go. That actually works pretty well. So what we'll do is uh, I'll get some pipe clamps. We'll put that. We'll put the pipe clamps on here so that uh, it just tightens it up a little bit. But other than that, it like this, it, it's pretty strong. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I like how this is going now. Uh, it's a lot better than how I first envisioned it, but that's how all projects are. You start one direction and you kind of follow it. The path is not always just straight. So uh, one other thing I did salvage from that chair was the seat. Uh, the reason I thought this would be good for this project is it has a lot of bunch of different holes in it so that we can uh, zip tie different things because there's going to be some electrical items like a power strip and some ch a charging station I want to add to this uh, just to keep everything close by. If it's going to hang like this, I think what I'm going to do is just use a whizzy wheel and cut uh, a notch out of the top here so then the back of it can sit flush to the pipe. It'll come straight through like that. So let's do that first. So now with a couple of zip ties, we'll stick that through. We'll do it from the back side to make it look neat. There we go, we'll do that. So we'll see how tight this holds. If not, we can always just take some screws and screw it in. Now we're gonna add a power strip to the back of our, uh, I guess, mounting plate so that we can, we're going to plug lights in, we've got a, we're going to make a charging station. So we'll add that back here and of course we'll just use zip ties. So now that we've got our power strip set up, I want to uh, arrange all the electrical connections that we're going to need for like charging stations and running wires to our action camera so we can do longer shots. For electronics, we've got uh, our action camera battery charger. This is for my uh, Sony, my main cam, primary camera battery charger. We've got the wires that will connect to here. And then we have our USB hub that I found. I probably had it for 20 years, so now it's coming to good use. I'm going to use that to connect all the wires uh, so that I don't have to have plugs on each end of this. We can just run them all through here and charge everything. And I also have a five foot cord that I'm going to, a USB cord that I'm going to run all the way up to the top that we can connect to our uh, action camera if we ever need to do long shots. So I have some of this 3M tape. It's their like more extreme foam tape that we'll add to the back of the USB hub and then also uh, zip tie it to the back of the chair also. Here's a little trick. If your zip tie isn't long enough to go around the object that you're trying to zip tie, you can take two of them and extend it by putting one end into the other and you'll make it longer. So now that we got the USB hub 
attached, I want to make turn around and make on the front part a shelf, and that's where we're going to attach all our electronic chargers. I found a piece of scrap. This is a PVC board. I use it for sign making. Uh, it's a little bit lighter, but you can always use MDF or plywood. It's not a problem. So what I'll do is I'll cut it in half. I'll make a shelf out of it, uh, screw it together, and then we'll mount it to the uh, top there. And then we can run all our wires. Now we're just going to pre-drill some holes for the screws that we're going to attach the shelf with. For this, instead of using zip ties, we're just going to screw from the back side through the uh, plastic backing and then that will help attach the uh, shelf. There you go. Let's start attaching some of the electronics. So now we're going to move on to attaching our uh, camera and our light to our post. And the way we're going to do that is using these two inch clamps. Um, I have a video on making these. Um, this, you can buy bandy clamps or you can just make your own using the uh, inner tube with these two inch spring clamps. And if you want to see more detailed video, I have a link up above. I like to use, I have a lot of uh, quarter inch by 20. Uh, screws and bolts and then I have a bunch of fender washers and nuts and lock washers to go uh, along with that that I keep in stock in the shop because I use it a lot on a lot of different projects so here's my uh, light source we've just got a regular uh, spring clamp uh, work light and then I covered it up with some tissue paper as a diffuser and so we're just going to attach it there's uh, holes already pre-drilled into the clamp so what we'll do is we'll clamp it this way and then we'll send a, a screw through with our fender washer another fender washer and this is just to spread the uh, the compression around to have so it has more hold on it put a lock washer it's probably not necessary but just in case and then we'll put our bolt on so now we just attach it to our pole and it can it's adjustable so we can just move it around and point it whatever direction we need it and then we can slide it up up and down depending on where what kind of shot we're taking slide up and down the pole so for the camera mount I decided to repurpose this old tripod I just need the uh, top swivel part of it we just need to take the legs off And here's an old bracket I found uh, in my scrap metal bin, and it fit just perfectly. So I took, uh, I drilled a hole at the top so we can mount this. But before I, before I did that, I drilled an extra hole in the clamp so that we'll have two points of contact when we're screwing the uh, the mount to the clamp. There you go. We'll screw that in to tighten it up just a little bit. Again, we'll just use our uh, quarter inch, quarter inch diameter by 20, which is 20 threads per inch. Uh, we'll use that to attach that to our clamp. And again, I'm just putting lock washers on the back of here. It's probably not necessary, but we'll just go ahead and do it. So now I've got the clamp set up. Now normally this will be for my primary camera, but since I'm using my primary camera, I just wanted to show uh, it in use. This is one of my action cameras. It's, so it's got the th same thread that you can uh, thread your camera mount to. And it uh, just clips on and holds where you want it. Now this has the benefit, it has a ball mount on it, so I can make adjustments sideways at different angles. And for the last little bit, the reason I made this pipe so tall is I wanted to add uh, 
my action camera up top here so I can take, oh, you can't see, can you? So you can take downward shots on projects or overhead shots if I'm doing a, a manipulation of an item or something like that. So uh, that gives me just a different angle view of uh, where I can clamp uh, my secondary camera. Well, I hope this gave you some ideas to maybe make your setup a little bit more efficient. Remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.